okay so we were discussing about the ways how the friction can be reduced okay in this what we were reading we were reading we were discussing about the ball bearings now what is ball bearing or what are ball bearings if you open your pedal uh, not your pedal means the pedal of your bicycle okay if you open the pedal of the bicycle you will find you will find you will see some small silver color you know small small uh, round uh, this thing uh, objects are there okay these are ball bearings now why it is so because just to give an easy movement for your uh, pedal okay now many in th this i gave the example of just your bicycle it is there in many vehicles almost in the wheels i'm talking about okay so when i say when i'm talking about ball bearings so how the structure is you know just this is the axle okay now this is the covering of that now here comes the ball bearings okay and then this is the inner surface this is the inner surface actually this one only okay inner surface of the wheels now see this is the axle okay and this part is totally filled with the ball bearings okay this means this is ball bearing only this one okay so very 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 small small rounded structure and what is this this is the inner part of the wheel that means it is in contact with this ball bearings so you know what is the again what is the uh, aim of doing this so that the movement become very easy the movement become fast easy okay now if you know these uh, ball bearings okay this part is oiled when this part is oiled so what will happen you know the friction will become like it will reduce more isn't it so first of all the circular surface and on the top of that if it is oiled that means again a lubricator is added so what will happen the friction will reduce to a greater extent that is the reason why the use of ball bearings are uh, is there why the ball bearings are used so this is what ball bearings okay it reduces the friction and when it is lubricated lubricated or when the when uh, oil or something you know, we have read about the lubricators is added so what will happen again the friction will reduce to a greater extent okay now what can be the other thing which can again reduce the friction is you know air cushion now what is the meaning of air cushion children so what's the meaning of air cushion air cushion means what see if two surfaces are there okay if two surfaces are there and between this two surfaces lot of friction is created okay lot of friction is there so if the friction has to be reduced so we know what has to be done the if if air is filled between these two surfaces okay if air is filled between these two surfaces then what will happen this air filled between two surface will act as an air cushion and won't allow the two surface okay two surface with the friction was there won't allow the two surface to come in contact and it will again very useful to reduce the friction okay one second i'll tell you what is there now suppose two surfaces are there and between these two surface lot of friction is there okay lot of friction is there now if air is filled between this two surface okay if air is filled between this two surface it will act as an air cushion okay and it won't allow the two surface to come in contact like this is a two surface and here if air is filled so what is happening the two surface are not coming in contact okay 
and thus the friction is reduced. So, what can we write in air equation? If there is more friction between the two surfaces it can be reduced by filling air as it won't allow it means who will not allow air will not allow ok as air won't allow the two surfaces the two surfaces to come to come in contact ok it will not allow the two surfaces to come in contact with each other ok so this is what air cushion ok air cushion means what here the air acts as an air cushion it does not allow the two surface to come in contact with each other and so thus the friction can be reduced ok now what can be the next thing next thing to reduce the friction is what anti friction metals ok now what is the meaning of anti friction metals anti friction metals ok now what is the meaning of anti friction metals see whenever two steel things ok whenever two surfaces are sliding on each other and both the uh, suppose if we take the example of steel both the surfaces are of steel that means there are two surfaces and both the surfaces are made up of steel then what will happen you know the friction which will be produced will be very high the friction produced will be very high so you know what what uh, uh, like uh, what is done then one surface is uh, taken or you know the lead surface is taken and uh, instead of taking the steel surface so you know there are certain substances certain you know um, I, I should say combinations where the if, if they are used properly the friction can be reduced ok and you know uh, it is not that completely the lead uh, complete lead is taken again a form of lead like I, I should the best way to say is the alloys ok. So, what is this anti friction metals there are certain metals or alloy which reduce the friction ok which reduce the friction and so, it is used in place of other metals. So, how can we write this anti friction metals when steel slides over other steel surface ok when steel slide when steel when steel I am so sorry when steel ok when steel slides over another steel surface large amount of friction is created ok when steel slides over other steel large amount of friction is created ok but you know when in place of steel ok so it can be replaced 
it can be replaced by alloy of lead okay it can be replaced by the alloys of lead why it can be replaced because this lead surface it gives a less of friction in comparison to the steel okay so instead of using two steel surface if it is replaced by uh, the alloy of lead then the friction which is produced here will be reduced it will be less and that is the reason why the alloys of leads and such kind of other combinations are used okay now what can be the next uh, or just we have discussed everything we have discussed here now ball bearings air cushions and also anti friction metals okay by the use of you know by making the changes in the shape that means streamlined shape then by adding of lubricant okay by even the by polishing the surfaces okay then by use of ball bearings even you know by changing the surface like if you take the circular things then what happens the friction get reduced okay and filling air in between the uh, friction the surface where the the friction is there and again by use of anti friction metals so all these are the ways how the friction can be reduced now we'll talk about something else see now i'll just let me clean this board okay so now we'll talk about the fluids okay now we have discussed this what is the meaning of fluid children fluid means what when like when we talk about liquids and gases these can be known as fluids okay fluids means what it includes both the thing liquids as well as gases so i will write about fluids now so we were talking about fluids now what is the meaning of fluids whenever we talk about liquids and gases okay in like we are talking about when we are talking about both the things in combination it can be known as fluids okay that means liquids can also be known as fluids and gas can also be known as the fluids okay so now here we are talking about the friction in fluids okay while discussing somewhere in the chapter we have discussed that the friction which is there which exists between the two solid surface is quite high then the friction which is there in the liquid okay but liquids also they also have their friction like friction can also be observed or can be seen or can be faced in the liquids and ga gases it is there isn't it but when i compare the friction which is produced between the two solid surfaces okay is will be always higher than what between the solid and liquid i'll tell you an example when i'm talking about the friction between the car and the road surface okay that means both the surfaces are what they are solids so the friction is very very high now the second example if i talk about the boat moving in the liquid so boat is what solid and it is in contact of the liquid surface so solid in contact of the liquid okay now next example if i talk about an aeroplane which is flying high in the sky that means what is there the liquid uh, the i'm so sorry the solid that means aeroplane is in contact of the air that means the gas okay and when we compare all these three frictions the friction which is seen the friction which is observed between solid and solid will be the highest one okay so first of all we will write that i will write here like solid and solid okay so what example can i take car solid surface okay car and road okay the next example can be taken of what like aeroplane and where does it flies it will obviously fly in the sky that means what will be there air 
that means what will be their gas that means which kind of surface is this it is for solid and gas ok. So, which kind of surface was the first one it is the solid and solid surface it is what solid and solid surface and the next one is what solid and gas and third one which I can talk is food ok moving in water. So, what will be here it will be solid in combination with liquid is not it. So, when I talk about these three surfaces the friction here <coughs> the friction observed here will be maximum it will be what it this surface the friction will be maximum ok. But it does not mean that here in this two cases the friction will not be there no even here also friction will be there ok. But little lesser than the here that means solid solid surface ok <coughs> ok. So, now we are talking about this two either the liquids and the solid or either the gas and the solid. Now, when I talk about these kind of friction you know the friction which is there or when a, a friction is created between these kind of surfaces means what fluids when fluids uh, you know exert friction then it is known as drag ok drag force means what in simple language the friction created by fluids is known as what it is known as drag ok. So, we are talking about the friction in fluids. So, the friction in fluid is known as drag friction in fluids is known as drag ok. So, when the friction is created due to the liquid or the gaseous surface then it is known as fluids uh, then, then when the friction is produced due to fluids then it is known as drag ok. Now, I will write the proper definition of the drag ok. I can write in somewhat you know different way also. So, the friction exerted by fluids is called as drag ok ok. So, how this drag can be reduced can we reduce the drag also ok what is drag the friction which is created or exerted by fluids is known as what drag ok. How it can be reduced children see reduce ok. First is shape streamline shape ok. Streamlined shape always reduces the friction. When you talk about the aeroplanes or ships or boats or you know any uh, vehicle uh, which runs in the liquid or in the air. So, always you will find the shape is what streamlined ok. Why streamlined? Why does it reduce the friction? Because it is sharp, it is like this, ok. So, it has got great, this shape has got greater capacity to cut the air pressure as well as the liquid pressure, ok. Now, when you talk about the streamlined shape in nature also, the shape of the fishes, take the shape of the birds. Ok, all these uh, all these animals also have streamlined shape 
why is it so so that the the air and the pressure of the gas can be or the air can be cut down can be reduced okay so streamlined shape is very very important it reduces it reduces the friction as it has greater capacity to cut the pressure of air and liquid okay it reduces the friction streamlined shape always reduces the friction as it has greater capacity to cut the pressure of air and liquids okay so first point first way how the uh, you know drag can be reduced now what is drag drag is a force which is exerted by the liquids and the gases what are liquids and gases known as these are known as fluids okay okay now what can be the second way children how the drag can be reduced what are the second way to reduce the drag okay so second we'll talk about the density of the fluids okay density okay now i'll give you one example okay you have a toy uh, maybe you take it okay i'm giving an option maybe submarine maybe ship maybe boat whatever toy you have okay and it has to be moved okay the toy submarines or the toy um, boats or ship whatever we are talking about it has to be moved on the surface of the liquids okay the first example the first in first case you have to move that in the water and the second case you have to move it on the melted chocolate okay it sounds quite interesting that we are sitting in a boat and having melted chocolate is there and just we are eating it isn't it but now please come out of this we are talking about the drag okay so the first case is what when you have to move your toy submarines into the liquid and the second case is what when you have to move your submarines into the melted chocolate now you only decide you only think and uh, you know uh, tell to yourself you cannot tell it tell to me you cannot you know uh, so uh, cannot discuss so you just discuss among yourself only so how uh, where the friction will be more children where the density of the liquid is more that means when the when we talk about the second example where the submarine has to move in the melted chocolate there the density is very high isn't it it is quite thick so it will be quite difficult for you to move your toy submarine into the chocolate melted chocolate isn't it so what does it prove children that greater density give rise to greater drag force isn't it greater density give rise to greater drag force so how the uh, this thing can be reduced like you know it cannot be reduced always the density of liquids cannot be increased and decreased it's not in our hand but just this is a factor okay this is a factor which also affects if the thickness is more than that that you know then what will happen the friction will also will be more okay so this was the second case now when i talk about the shape when i'm talking about the streamlined shape if you have observed if you have you know noticed when a swimmer okay when a swimmer goes in the swimming pool to swim 
if you have observed his position, he takes his position like this, isn't it? I do not know, know much about the positions as I am not a swimmer. But if you have observed, you know, even once if you remember, the position is like this, okay. So, what they are trying to do, you know, they are trying to uh, make, okay, they are trying to bring their body into streamlined shape, isn't it? Then they sit in a particular position, okay. They sit in a particular position, again they bring their hands like this. What they are doing, again they are trying to bring their bodies in the streamlined position, okay. So, again, uh, while swimming also, if the streamlined position is maintained, then it gives, uh, you know, it, the, lit, uh, the lesser drag force will be observed or will be faced, okay. And if you know about this, you know, if the swimmer has to jump, okay, into the water and if the position is not correct, you know, it hurts very badly, okay, sometimes maybe on the stomach and you know, it, but it hurts very badly, I know this much. Uh, that it hurts, okay. So, for jumping into water, into the swimming pool, a particular position has to be taken. That position is just to cut the force of the water, so that the minimum, okay, that means your body sh like won't get hurt. Hmm? So, this was all about fluids, fluids exert pressure, that is a separate thing, but here we are talking about what fluids exert what? like friction also, okay. The friction exerted by fluid is called as drag. It can be reduced if the shape is streamlined, okay. And it also is, affect, this uh, drag is also affected by the density of the liquids, isn't it? If the density is more, then the friction also or the drag also get increased also, uh, but also it get increased, okay. Now, we will talk about the other topic, okay. Now, that small topic is there which I think will be, I will be able to write over here. I will talk about first of all the spring balance, okay. What is the meaning of spring balance children? Okay, spring balance is an instrument, okay. It is an instrument which has spring in it and here the readings can be taken. Here one hook is there with which it can be attached to any body, okay. Now suppose if I have to talk, if I, I can attach it to you know a box, a brick, okay. So this instrument gives what? It gives the reading of the weight, the force actually, the weight, how much weight is there, how much force has to be applied to move this weight, okay. So, what it is, it is a brick or a box to this, the hook of this, I have tied over here, I have taken a thread and tied over here and I have, this is the hook, okay. So, to the hook, the, uh, the thread or anything can be attached, okay. You know, in general, the weighing machine, you might have seen children in the clinics when you go to the doctors and you may also have seen this weighing machine in the, you know, railway platforms. You know, might have also uh, measured your, uh, you have, might have taken your weight, you know, because it is a human tendency, you know, whenever we see a weighing machine, we just try to jump and we just try to take our own weight, okay. So, what exactly spring balances are? Spring balance is just an instrument which help us to take our weight, okay. When we talk about a smaller, when I am talking about a smaller spring balance, it can be used to any object and when it is pulled, okay. When it is pulled, the reading comes over here. What does it say? It says that this is the weight of the substance and this much is the force which is required to pull it. Now, I will continue with this, why I discuss spring balance because we will talk about spring balance in the next topic. So, now we will talk, we will talk about the next topic.